Hello everyone, this video is about PyTorch based implementation for face emotion recognition. At the end of this video, we will be showing you how to implement line by line code for deploying this live webcam demo, in which a deep learning architecture first detects a face and then based on facial features, it identifies either a person is sad, neutral, surprised or any other facial expressions correspondingly. We will be using Python as a programming language and OpenCV for overlaying this text data and rectangles and for implementing deep learning architecture we will be using PyTorch. If you are visiting our video for the first time, I would like to inform you that we do have 4 different videos on the same topic such as face emotion recognition. My name is Shanola and I am a PhD student at Inha University South Korea. Let's get started. Let me tell you briefly about each video, such as if you are an extreme beginner and you do not want to or if you are hesitating to train a deep learning architecture, DeepFace is a most suitable candidate for you. Because in DeepFace library, we do have a lot of deep learning architectures already trained for face emotion recognition. All you need is to just deploy them. So if you are a beginner, go visit our channel for DeepFace tutorial. On the other hand, if you are a deep learning enthusiast and you want to implement uh, everything in Python, these two candidates such as TensorFlow and PyTorch are suitable for you. On the other hand, if you want to implement uh, anything in MATLAB or face emotion recognition in MATLAB, you can watch our video on MATLAB. For this particular video, we will be following PyTorch. For all of them, our input is same and similarly output is also same but the methodology however the methodology is entirely different we will be explaining concept for each video and then we will proceed further this is the outline of my video such as first i will explain some concepts then data set and we will explain something uh, for example deep emotion a paper about face emotion recognition we will be implementing this and similarly i will afterwards i will explain some installations method and ultimately we will go for the code implementation so any of them if you already know if you are already familiar with any of them for example if you already know the concepts you can just directly navigate for the code implementation however we recommend you that you should first uh, get some concept because deep emotion is a paper which we are going to implement in this video so the question is how to find facial expressions so broadly speaking we can divide uh, facial expressions recognition into two techniques or methods one is camera based technique and another is physiological we do have other methods but the broadly speaking we can just divide into two the camera based techniques uh, in which we can just take an image this is typically a front looking image and this girl we can just detect a face and then can train our deep learning architecture and after training we can easily deploy as, and this deep learning architecture would classify this image into angry or if it is happy then happy and sad and other categories correspondingly or here we can observe that for example this girl is angry but what if she is faking up just like in the start of this video, I show you a motivational video or live webcam demo in which I was uh, faking up different uh, uh, facial expressions. Uh, all of a sudden, I was angry. All of a sudden, I was surprised. But in actual, I was not neither of them, right? So this can, could be faking up, right? It can fake up the expressions. However, for biosignal based techniques, you cannot fake because the body tells the biosensors what's going on inside your body. So she's angry, but if we connect this biosignal, such as EEG based signal, this is based on brain, similarly for cardio, uh, for heart based, and similarly for respiratory system based. So there are different techniques uh, based on biosignals by which we can detect the emotions, right? So this is a typical example of the EEG like brain signals. So if we connect this brain signal to this girl, right now we can just classify that she's angry, but we cannot classify how much she's angry. 
we cannot know the intensity of angriness right now but if we connect this into brain then we can further classify that how much she is angry so typically uh, for classification problem the label could be for example the output can be one uh, for angry output two for happy three for surprise and uh, sad and so on so for angry this is one the when we further classify this into uh, further steps this problem is called as regression so usually regression is in the floating point so we can just divide into for example if this is point 1 the output of the regression is point 1 we can say that the angriness level is very low similarly if it is point 9 or 1 then we can say that this is very high level of angriness so regression the output of the regression is always a floating point while the output of the classification is always a decimal point so if you want to further classify or further divide into categories we can use a regression problem in the physiological sensor or biosignals we usually have output of the regression right so if the angriness overshoot we can just turn into tense or sad on any, any other uh, categories correspondingly so typically the biosignals are based on regression and the image based solutions are mostly classification because we this particular expression we cannot further divide how much she's angry right because she can fake up as well so in this case we this is the type of signal and then we can train our deep learning architecture and then we can get the output now one another thing i would like to inform you that sometime regression for example if we get 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 range then we can further implement an if else statement to classify an angry okay so we can also convert regression into angry as well based on our accuracy so emo uh, in the biosignal case we call it emotion recognition human emotions recognition while for camera based solution we call it as facial expression recognition which is a classification problem and this is topic of or scope of today's video once we have established that our problem is classification problem we could have many classes for example tense excited and a lot of them but for the simplicity we have divided or we have selected only seven classes okay such as this girl is angry this girl is disgusting uh, sometimes you have might have seen if you check uh, of if you view any bad thing sometimes you say oh disgusting so this is a feature of disgusting right so like is e when you sound like this and you say this is disgusting right and this is typically people don't know about the feature so that is why i'm just uh, informing you or maybe you already know so that's a good thing uh, similarly fear we are already familiar with that and happy is very famous sad surprised and this is neutral because in this case we do not know which uh, which kind of facial expression is this so we categorize it into neutral okay so in the market we or research community we do have a lot of data sets available the one we have selected for this particular video uh, is FER 2013, which was published by Google in 2013 on uh, uh, in a paper uh, along with two other candidates. But one of them is FER 2013, which which is available right now in the Kegel. Those who do not know about the Kegel competition, I would like to inform you that Kegel uh, in a lot of companies, for example, Kegel is a website. And if a problem occur in any of the industry, so the industry will give the problem to the Kegel website and they will announce the problem. Deep learning experts across the world will propose uh, the solutions, the deep learning solutions to this problem. Okay, so for example, this is DL1, this is DL2 and so on. And then at, at the end, the Kegel, uh, for example, Kegel uh, will... Um, save some text uh, or some test data sorry some test data which will be not showing to them and then based on this answer or solution they will categorize or they will rank all of them the first second or so on the the rank them all of them and they will award them 
so kegel is a uh, competition uh, it's a website and they usually launch many competitions so um, why i told you this because if you are a deep learning enthusiast i would recommend you to just visit the kegel website and find some problems in it and try to solve it that will definitely boost up your skills once we get to know that uh, we have selected data set fer 2013 let's check what are the problems inside it realistic it should be realistic data set right actually usually the data set should be realistic one why because over here you can see that the background is white and this is very crystal clear image and we can just observe the images based on their facial expressions it's easily can be uh, classified right but if we for example train our deep learning architecture on these plain images and then we deploy in the real time environment we our deep learning architecture would definitely fail why because all of the previous images on which we train our deep learning architecture was front looking image but this is not the front looking image so that is why our data set should be realistic as i told you that it was published by google what they did back in 2013 they just searched their database for the videos the videos you guys have uploaded across the world people have uploaded their videos and images right and pictures uh, of some for example facebook and google uh, and different um, databases so what google did is that they just collect or crop all of the images from real world videos the one you guys or public uploaded you you have seen over here there are some watermark and some background so there they are the images cropped from real world uh, data from from those where people have uploaded right so that this is a good thing now once our deep learning architecture is trained on this kind of data set it would be very robust but definitely it has a lot it will have a lot of problems so our accuracy will be very low right so this is the one uh, we already um, predicting that our accuracy will be very low okay uh, let's uh, revive what kind of problems there are so one of them is imbalance problem so those videos and pictures that you guys have uploaded or the public have uploaded in the google so they could only find for example 436 discuss samples while happy for happy thanks to you guys that you have uploaded so many images regarding to happy so there are a lot of images so typically a deep learning architecture must have similar same uh, size of the classes then samples in that all the classes must be same ideally right so if it is not then deep learning architecture would be biased towards one of them because the weights for example there are limited weights so weights will be biased towards the happy so they will try to classify each of them towards happy so it will be very robust in case of happy while for discuss it will not be like the accuracy would not be good enough okay so the solution to the problem is uh, that augmentation augmentation mean increase okay so increase means that we can for example if we have limited images we can increase them how for example we can rotate the image okay we can scale scale means zoom in zoom out and a lot of other combinations we can do right so out of one image we can create many other images and ultimately we could have similar size of images right similarly we do have another technique called as gans so have you noticed for example there are some apps in the mobile uh, for example if you you can give you a husband image and for example, a couple image husband wife and they can predict their kid image in future right how can they they can do using gans so generative adversarial neural networks can create a fictitious images as well so we can also use gans to produce more images so that ultimately we could have equal number of classes okay another problem is intra class variation the intra class variation means inside the class and over here you can see that all of them are angry but you see over here these these are face image of human but this this is painting this is sketch this is cartoon so all of them are different so intra class variation is there right so solution is to 
avoid overfitting overfitting means uh, i will explain uh, in, uh, shortly what is overfitting like uh, when i will be explaining deep emotion paper i will definitely explain what is overfitting and the solution could be drop out and many other layers right so i will explain uh, in detail keep watching this video similarly another problem is occlusion occlusion is that this guy has hidden uh, his um, face with his hands right so only small portion of area is left so again this is challenging for deep learning architecture to deal with this kind of problem similarly contrast variation these images are too black these two guys are too black like con contrast is very high and similarly high means that contrast means difference right uh, between the images so these are too white uh, black and these are too white so definitely the there is a contrast variation similarly eye glass problem so this girl has covered as uh, we told you that this is a realistic data set this girl has covered her eyes with the sunglasses so because of that a very important uh, like eyes are very important feature because you see over here we can identify that it is she's surprised right so eyes are very important features so again we have eyeglasses and outliers as well as i told you this is a realistic data set so definitely mistakenly they have cropped a lot of images which actually are not a part of angry although they have put into angry but they are not a part of angry so a lot of problems in the data set why i have explained because we are expecting we are expecting that the accuracy would be very low okay we will we will see shortly so our methodology is based on implementation of the deep emotion today in this video we will be implementing this deep emotion paper which is a very famous paper having accuracy of for example 70 percent you see not uh, like in contrast to other deep learning architecture for, for example for image classification most of them are more than 90s right but this data set is so complex that uh, this guy in, in this is not um, this is fer 2013 but this paper is i see in 2019 they have achieved only 70 percent of accuracy why because of the complexity of the data set right so we will explain all this paper uh, uh, shortly okay so over here you can see convolution neural networks relu and a lot of other layers uh, i believe that as you're have logged in and you're just watching this video so definitely you know somehow but definitely let's revive our concepts so concepts of deep learning is that for example if i provide this image for the classification our as our problem is based on classification we provide this image as a cat, a cat and dog and ultimately this deep learning architecture can classify very easily into dog right so what is an image as our input is image in image is nothing but a number right for a computer they understand a gray level from 0 to 255 five. 0 is actually uh, black black in color right and 255 is white in between all of them are gray level right okay so all of them are gray we call it gray level so that is why you see this is less uh, less in number so this is uh, 170 right so it is towards to uh, uh, 55 so over here you can see this is 68 so this is towards black okay so um, so lower the number which is towards black highest the number it is towards white color right 255 is white you see this is 238 so it's almost white is not exactly five white this guy is exactly this is 255 so this is white right so uh, an image a gray level image a gray level image is all of the values between 0 to 255 but typically this is the colored image and in the colored image we have r g and b the red green and blue three different channels we have right so uh, over here we you, you are seeing over here the the dark so you can see this is the you can this particular uh, pixel would be black like zero in the number right for all different three channels we would have zero uh, for blue and other colors we will have a combination of red green blue and every each has 0 to 255 0 to 255 okay each of them has a range 0 to 255 so if, uh, typically gray level image we have only one grid while in color image we have 
three channels okay what is convolution this might be very uh, some for some guys it would be boring so you can just skip the section as i have divided my videos into different sections so for those who want to revive with me the concepts it is better okay so what is convolution neural networks so basically it is for feature extraction right okay so on the, on the, on the uh, previous slide sorry for <coughs> uh, for the interruption previously it uh, i has show you that this is a dog image so if i want to extract some uh, dog image for example this is a dog image and for example it's a parrot let me say it's a bird right uh, in the, this image and convolution neural network is basically this is our kernel and the filter and we just multiply on each and just getting these values we are just multiplying everyone and summing up and then we are getting the values right like this so we are just multiplying this into this so you see over here what is this this is an edge right it's one to zero as i show you that for example this is one and this is zero so this is black and this is white right so this is an edge similarly zero to minus one so definitely i would i'm not going into filter type what is the type of filter okay uh, there are many filters uh, but i don't want to mention the type of filter but you can say that this is an edge so we can just multiply all of them and we can easily detect an edge for example we want to this is a bird image for example and we have for example this is a filter this is a filter and for example this is a bird okay uh, sorry for my terrible drawing and i want to extract this feature what i will do i will multiply this just like here and get this result then multiply this but over here as this is different than this so zero multiplied by anything would be zero so i will get zero answer or very low answer when i multiply this this over here it will zero and so on but ultimately when i will get multiply this into this the my answer will be boost up because this is for example uh, 255 because okay or maybe zero or any other numbers this will be multiplied by this so we will get a good edge right so this will boost up so convolution neural network, network sorry convolutional neural network is to extract the features such as what can be features select so like, such like uh, such as sorry for fumbling okay such as edges and corners and so on so a lot of features we have so we can use uh, different filters like this is an edge filter similarly we can apply many other uh, filters on this convolution network so typically we do not uh, this is uh, actually previously before convolution neural network when people were using uh, image based techniques or computer vision based techniques usually they uh, initialize their weights by own but now thanks to deep learning architecture everything is done by itself automatically right so they just learn the features by itself they not randomly just uh, initialize it and then they can do it and they can just try to learn these features and they can adjust their own weights correspondingly but previously this was the solution so in order to get an edge edge we can we should multiply this with edge so that both multiplied and boost up and i can detect that okay this uh, for example this th kind of shape is exist exist over here in the image right okay now we have got the concept of feature extraction okay again furtherly uh, as i told you that for one single uh, channel like gray image it's enough but for definitely i told you as I told you, the color element should be R, G, B. So these are the one. So usually the kernels are together and we sum up everything and we filter out into one. And we usually we have a lot of filters, right? To extract as many as features as we can. Once we got the features from for what will be here? The an image of the emotion, right? Just I show you in the start. So we have image of uh, emotion and we are just extracting the features once we have extracted the features have you seen over here relu and other things or for example max pooling layer let me explain what is what are uh, what is max pooling layer so as i told you before convolution layer is for feature extraction and max pooling layer over here this is two by two uh, for example this is two by two 
uh, kernel size again for max pooling layer. So we are getting the maximum is eight. So we just paid, post, uh, paste eight over here, and then over here, who's maximum six? We just paste six, and who is maximum nine? We just paste nine. Who is maximum over here? Nine, and we paste, just paste nine. So the good thing about max pooling, we have one of the advantages is that we are forwarding only the best features. Okay, we extracted the features with using CNN conversion layer, and now we are forwarding the best features and reducing the size. You see, uh, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So four by four is just uh, shortened up into two by two, and we have just collected the best features, right? So we are forwarding the best features. The one of the thing is, uh, one of the advantages we are just forwarding the best, and we are also reducing the size. Okay, so our computations will be the computations will be much reduced afterwards. And the second benefit is we are reducing overfitting. Okay, so what 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 is overfitting for a programmer? As we are going to implement, whenever you are you get the training accuracy of, for example, ninety or huge accuracy you're getting training accuracy is ninety percent, and when you apply on the test. Test means that those images we, you, which you haven't shown during the training. So for test accuracy, uh, if you are getting 30 or 20, it means that you are doing some terribly wrong. It means that uh, for training, you are, it's very best. And for test, it's not good. It means it, it is overfitting. Overfitting means it is learning the features from input too much. It is just overfitted to uh, the input features. So in that case, we can increase the max pooling size. Like we can into, uh, increase if it is what two by two, we can do it three by three, okay, and so on. So we can increase the size and we can achieve overfitting. We can resolve the overfitting problem. What is overfitting problem for a programmer? If you are getting good accuracy of training, but you are not getting a good accuracy for test, then you can just uh, increase the size of the max pooling. That's I'm telling uh, from my experience. Okay, so what is next? After max pooling layer, we have ReLU. Okay. So for ReLU is activation function. Basically, we have a lot of activation activation function, and it is for to introduce non-linearity, right? So usually, typically in the real world problem, we do not have anything linear. So in order to convert it uh, linear into, in order to resolve non-linear problems, we introduce introduce activation function what it does for example this is a relu function so all the negative values for example from max pooling layer whatever we get for the minus three two six eight from the previously this was eight six nine nine but let's say we had minus eight or something like this so all negative values will be uh, will be suppressed will be gone and only positive values will be passed right so in this case we will in in our grid we will introduce some kind of sparsity why because this one for some negative this one will be suppressed this one will be gone this one will be gone right so we are introducing a kind of non-linearity because we don't know we cannot predict which values will be negative which will be positive okay and we have uh, apart from relu we have sorry apart from relu we have uh, elu leaky relu and a lot of other activation functions as well right most of them are passing positive and some some negative as well okay so there are a lot of uh, activation functions so far the best is relu so that is how we are following in this video another thing is uh, okay um, another thing is dropout layer over here right we have dropout layer so why we introduce dropout layer uh, this is a phenomenon of dropout we randomly drop some of the neurons right so again we are introdu introducing sparsity sparsity sorry sparsity and then uh, ultimately we can achieve uh, reduce overfitting so what is overfitting problem again if you are getting training accuracy of 90 percent and you test your test accuracy is very low 20 percent 30 percent very low so the uh, you can just easily predict that you have serious problem of dropout so increase it is mostly uh, in the probability as in point one point how much you want to drop uh, okay, so if you uh, point one means very less if you want to increase just go for two and if your problem don't resolve then go for point three So ultimately you will uh, or Maybe you just reduce the accuracy after a dropout up to 80% but 
but the good thing will happen the test accuracy will be increased for example 40 percent then you reduce 70 then it may be achieve 60 percent so it's a better way to increase dropout layer okay so based on my experience i'm just telling you or uh, whenever you have got some train this is my training accuracies and these are my test accuracy so whenever you get good training accuracy and very bad test accuracy so try uh introducing dropout layer and increasing the dropout uh, percentage or uh, probability in that case your although your training accuracy will go down but it will be realistic so that the test accuracy will go up okay lastly uh, but not the least the fully connected layer we have so now that we have achieved all of dropout we have achieved only in, we have introduced non-linearity we have we have achieved only maximum values all of these things we have done so the last uh, layer is a uh, fully connected layer over here right okay so uh, gradually we are going towards it and sorry for just let me remove this so this fully connected layer you see this is seven seven shows the the last fully connected layer must have the the size of the neuron the number of neurons should be equal to the number of the classes right so this is seven seven means we have seven classes as we explained as we have explained before okay so the fully connected layer is now we are summing up everything right we are summing up all the features that have been gone through max pooling layer we have extracted the cnn convolution layer uh, the ex extracted the features through we have passed through the max pooling layer we have dropped some some of them so now we have done all of them and relu we have introduced non-linearity now we are summing up all of the features right together so we are summing up so in the fully connected layer every single neuron is connected to every other single neuron of the next layer and you see the size is also reduced over here for example you see over here it was 50 and then it becomes 7 so we are mostly it, for example 128 then 64 and we go towards 7 okay so most of the uh, time the fully connected layer uh, we we get the last fully connected layer should be equal to the number of the classes and we are gradually uh, sum up our all features correspondingly right not that we have followed all of the features feature extraction we have done max pooling we have done dropout non-linearity as well okay now we are going to sum up and the last thing is softmax uh, classifier okay the softmax probability so in the uh, fully connected layer we can have a relu as over here let me show you again okay so over here we can have relu as an activation function and over here we have relu with a convolution and relu so from with each layer we have activation function you see over here with a fully connected layer we also have um, activation function so in this case sometimes we have relu activation function and any of them it could be right uh, ten h and any other it we could have but for last fully connected layer we must have some like sigmoid or most of time we have softmax softmax is again an activation function but uh, in contrast to relu and other what it does it provide us the class probabilities so the last fully connected layer before the softmax uh, we call it the output we call it logits okay and then after implementing this formula of the softmax classifier the output is in the terms of probabilities so the maximum we get means for example if it was it was a dog this is cat this is for example elephant so we can surely assume that this is dog right and first of all it was on our case it was angry and so on so we can predict that it is angry right so softmax is the class for, to produce class probabilities okay what is going on now we know all the concept what what is going on okay so let's summarize so we extracted the features then produce non-linearity and so on so what is the contribution of this paper as it says attentional convolutional neural network what they did is deep emotion is facial expression recognition using attentional convolution okay so this is their localized network okay so they provide um, this face expression image into this and this as well 
so this is a typical feature extraction but this is again uh, it is attentional based so attentional based means that we, i have a big image and i want to focus on particular part right i want to focus on this so this small part uh, this convolution layers and this is a combination it can just try tell me to focus on this particular um, site right and we can uh, generate a mask and if you do not know we can generate a saliency uh, but for the for saving the time or oh, i'm not going into detail so this is for intentional unit and attention unit usually converge a particular uh, towards a particular feature so then you see we can generate a grid so it is adaptive like we can get that theta so based on every image we have a different um, salient feature okay so it can uh, uh, it can tell a deep learning architecture to focus on particular part right inside the image particular part can be focused and then so on it is adaptive and then it can tell us so it could achieve you see 70 percent more than uh, state of the art techniques till 2019 these days we do have in 2020 we do have improved the accuracy but so far it is the one so in this video we will be implementing everything and we will be getting the accuracy correspondingly in pytorch let's dive into implementation and the tools we will be required is one of them is anaconda anaconda is a package of the libraries and ids and those you already know the package installations and you do have installed for example pytorch and um, and opencv you can just directly dive uh, or navigate into implementation as i told you before during the video as well so i will divide uh, all the videos uh, into sections and you can easily navigate just click that section and you can go to directly so that your time is not wasted I really respect your time so all the concept i explained so far is for beginners definitely so it's for both i'm targeting both beginners plus experts as well so let's implement and let's first install and then implement this section will explain how to install anaconda jupyter notebook and pytorch so in case you if you are already familiar with these installations you can just skip this section and navigate to the uh, or directly dive for the implementation section so okay let's start uh, the installation so in google you can already uh, write anaconda installation and the first link you will find like this so you can just um, open a new tab i already open it but just i just open this so uh, for anaconda installation you can just go installation on windows once you click okay over here you can just download the anaconda installer installer and if you can see over here uh, all the steps are well explained so for windows user it is super simple so as i'm using windows so it's super simple all you need is to just click next next and next okay so once i believe that you already installed the anaconda uh, so then you can just as i'm using windows so then you can press this anaconda navigator and over here when you find anaconda navigator so you can observe over here that some of the buttons are blue in color and some of them are green in color so the green shows that i haven't installed them yet while blue shows that i have already pressed this install button for them so it's already installed so jupyter notebook i have already installed by clicking this so it is super simple to install jupyter notebook so once you install the Jupyter Notebook, uh, you can, uh, for example, again you can just come to an account prompt, and this time you just run it as administrator. So okay, after running it, running it as administrator, over here you can observe that this is base, and over here my root is also base. Okay, so this is actually virtual environment. You can just check conda env list. So once you just check conda and, uh, and env list, so there are a lot of options for the environment, uh, different environments. So actually, I have different install, different kind of installations. So you, you can, as I'm going to show you the PyTorch installation, so you can just uh, do it conda create uh, like any virtual environment with any name you want, right? And then uh, for, for example, for going into anyone, conda activate. Mm, let me select t of old right so if i do it it will go okay and if i again do it conda activate 
rather than TFO. If I write base, you see it. I can navigate to anyone. And then if I want to check what kind of installations are already done, so I can just go to environments, and you see over here I can see a lot of in installations. So if I search PyTorch or only Torch, so you see I have already installed the PyTorch and Torch Vision, which shows that my versions okay so how to install pytorch so after installing anaconda no, uh, and jupyter notebook what you need is to just you can visit google and general just write pytorch install and you can just start click the this link the first link and um, then over here you can see over here that it has already detected that uh, what kind of features I have I am as I am using Windows so it has automatically using my uh, configuration file it has already detected that I am using Windows and I'm also I have already already installed Anaconda so that is why it shows Conda otherwise it will show you pip if you haven't installed then Python and definitely it has just uh, selected my CUDA as well based on the specifications of my mm, uh, for example uh, GPU right so based on all of them and CUDA library and other things I have already installed so if you guys do not have um, uh, CUDA or do not have NVIDIA um, GPU so you can just directly go and the good thing is that whatever uh, specs you you have in your computer it will automatically select you a command so all I need is to just copy this command Control C and as I have run this with run as administrator as I told you before so you can just paste it and you can just run it so in my case I have already installed a uh, PyTorch and torch vision so I am not doing it right for for your case uh, you need to install PyTorch and torch vision as well so on the github there is already available a very nice implementation of a paper uh, that we have discussed initially so in the on the github i would provide the link of this github uh, although this is not the official um, let me zoom in this is not the official implementation of the paper but uh, you can just find this paper uh, and it's already available on the archive and if you open this paper i have already opened it so it's very uh, nicely written paper so you can just check out and they have also used uh, on different data set mm, you see over here they have used fer 2013 data set and uh, these are the fer 2013 which we have discussed initially and they have also used on a lot of other data sets so if you are interested in the implementation so it's already provided on the github i will share the link and you can just play with other data sets as well okay so now uh, coming back to the implementation so you can just uh, from the code you can just download the zip and what i did is for you guys for this tutorial i have ch changed a little bit the code but the main uh, functions are the same okay so let's uh, i have already opened uh, created a folder so it's always better in my case it's already populated but in your case it would be empty so it's always better to have for a uh, proper uh, folder created so let me navigate to my folder let me zoom it okay i'm going to open jupyter notebook and in here case i have already implemented uh the code okay so i have implemented the code um actually i have just modified it and my code is initially based on this so let's mm, copy this to my edge so that we should not navigate again and again okay so this is the code uh, provided to them so as we have discussed initially the diagram of our program so over here you can see for example over here you can see Mm, uh okay sorry okay over here you can see the deep emotion.py data loader generate data okay and main as well so i have actually modified the main so if you visit the main uh dot py so there are a lot of arguments going on and in order to run this code you have to pass everything from outside so what i did is that i have just removed them commented them and i just implemented it again 
okay so step wise we will understand what's going on right so first let's discuss uh, discuss the the model itself right then we will go for the each uh, like generate data and everything uh, step wise right so let me open this what is going on inside the paper this is the implementation okay so let me have okay this is my png so this is the paper uh the model main model of the paper so uh, such as it has a localized network and this conversion network and we have already studied the concept behind it so what we need, we need to do is that uh, for example uh, we have created a class uh nn dot module we have just passed the argument and deep emotion you can change the name as well but this is the deep emotion is the the paper name so that is why it is a re-implementation okay so then definitely def in it uh, we are calling all those functions which are inherited in this uh, init function and then we can uh, do it so till this point it's uh, typically sim similar for all pytorch program okay so now that we you have done this for example till this point it's same for uh, almost everyone and now uh, again so let me tell you uh, this init function the def init function so in case of def init function uh, this is actually always uh, okay let me open the same function over here in my folder so that i can modify it for you guys okay this is deep motion okay let me zoom again okay so this is again uh, till this point it's same as i told you before okay and then self dot uh, this is the name of the this could be anyone right this this is the name so you can modify the name anything uh, like for your um, for your easy uh, like purpose uh, you can have a sense uh, you can have a name which have a good sense okay so these are the names of the my of different layers and these are actually the functions right and then uh, and then is the main um, in the pytorch we have, for deep learning we use nn and as we have inherited all the functions so nn dot covid uh, sorry the convolution uh, 2d okay and uh, the con convolution 2d is 1 into 10 into 3 okay so i will explain everything what's going on over here so the most important thing if i zoom out the most important thing is actually if you have worked for example for making a dish so you have ingredients so these are our ingredients actually if i even if i copy paste for example over here if i copy uh, paste over here sorry okay if i make a lot of them so it's nothing going to happen if i change this three if i change this four so so these are not part of my these are not part of my uh, model right why because this these are just ingredients these are variables you can say are ingredients so actual thing is this one so this is actually my dish so these are my ingredients in init function all of them are ingredients while in the forward function this this is my actual implementation so this is in the forward function this is actual implementation okay so over here whatever i do is uh, uh, will make will make the difference right Uh, okay sorry okay so we'll make the difference but over here if i do three four five so i can have a lot of functions over here if i want to and then uh, later uh, i can just call them in the forward function okay so over here actually my model is not created these are you can say uh, variable initializations so all of them this is that is why it is called as init so these are initializations right so uh, the first convolution conv1 is uh, nn.com 2d and it is taking input these are the input channel and these are the output channel and this is my kernel size okay so input is one uh, and then 10 and you can also see for example if you google and you can see touch like this you can just search 
okay so everything is uh com 2d and torch dot and then so in channel this is my out channel these are the kernel size so every all the description is available on the internet uh, and on the pytorch website right so you can just check what are the arguments and even the formulas everything has been provided to you okay so that is i'm just going through the code okay this one okay so this is uh, first of all this is the in channel this is out channel okay and uh, again so actually what we i will let you know we are just converting into 48 into 48 what our what were our image size so we are just making in the one uh, array and then uh, okay so these are the convolution neural networks uh, it's the same like the the png okay so these are the convolution neural networks but as i told you before these are are just ingredients so the best way to understand is this one Okay, let's understand this one. So the first thing in the in our model, what's happening? It is calling self dot stn. So stn is this function, okay, in which we are calling self localization. So this is the localization function. So in which n n sequential or uh, com two d and all of them. So two convolution layers and then max pooling and relu layers. So okay, again, so you see the localization function, two convolution layers and max pooling and relu. Okay, and linear again. So that is the the one okay these are all of them uh, are the functions and then uh, we are all we have also for localized we have fully connected layer as well okay so first what i am doing over here stn dot localized we are doing okay and then uh, the input will come here and then we will provide localize and then in the localized function localization function we are also ca ca uh, calling the fully connected layer like this okay so till then for example why i'm doing oh sorry okay so these are the convolution and these are f fc localized function this is in the stn function and then we are concatenating it okay so till the, this point uh, i hope you understand so the, till this point we have just created our stn dot function okay and then theta dot view for this this is for changing the dimension reshaping actually reshaping is going on over here and then again we are applying a fine grid okay the theta we are creating so as this this what is this this is actually attention unit as i told you attention uh, unit right so this is attention based as our we discussed that the paper is attention based so localized network is attention based so we are generating a grid based on our, our feature extraction okay and then till the, this is returning x okay so till this point we have this, this what is this this is we have implemented for example attention unit right till this point we have implemented attention unit and then what we have done is again we are creating relu and sorry not relu we are just actually initially we are creating the output of this is going inside the convolution one so it is not 1d convolution actually this is the name right what was the name we we have just called this is the convolution one so as i told you these are just ingredients actual model is here right we are creating the model over here so inside the output it will go and we are just generating the convolution layer and then fully connected layer sorry in the relu and uh, we are calling not from n but f dot relu okay and then com2 and then all of them are convolution 2d and this is the out, out input and the output and these are kernel sizes so as the code is provided to you and you can just clip click the github link and you can just download the code and just, you can run but half of the part half of the part i will do it the first we understand what is going on and then i will start implementing it okay so then over here we have a dropout layer and everything i think it's pretty much similar so the most important thing is that everything is happening over here nothing is happening here but we are just initializing right that is why it's just initialization even if you write a lot of functions and you do not call here it will not forward pass right so this is the most important we're calling this function stn stn is calling localized function and again this is there is a fine grid and a lot of functions called here okay so you can just uh, download the code from github and that's what we have understand so this is the this is the model and it, this is deep emotion.py contains all the implementations right once we have understood what is the implementation okay 
so as i told you i have modified this code based on the main okay let me okay so it has uh, this we have already understand and i have modified the main but before diving into implementation let me tell you what is generate dot data okay so let me go for generate dot data okay so this is my generate dot data okay so uh, in this case uh, for example uh, generate data is actually as i told you before so we have actually the size is 48 into 48 right so size of the data is 48 into 48 is the image size and it it uh, for example in the 48 into 48 we have 48 um, okay what is the let me check the calculator okay so what is 48 into 48 this is 2304 so we have converted into 2304 1d dimension okay 1d dimension okay so in the 1d array we have already converted and then saved it in dot uh, csv file file and uh, along with the labels right so uh, over here again if uh, you visit this uh, over here you can just say uh, over here it ha they have provided you the kegel as we discussed before so you need to download train.csv and test.csv so over here when you click the website so everything has been mentioned to you that what is going on angry is zero disk is one and this is the data set so you need to provide these two you just you can just download over here okay so once you download uh, it and what is generate dot generate .py is doing is just extracting this back to the image right so this generate data generated data is doing is uh, it is reading the images okay and reading the images and converting into uh, uh, images right so these this is in the form of array actually and we are converting array into image right so this is this is reading with pandas we are reading csv path and then data frame again data frame is the pandas data frame and then we it's just uh, we are converting like the percentage of them to from one location to another and then we are just converting into images right so these are and then we can save the images as well so as i have already processed uh, like i have just in i have created a data folder in which i have provided them train and test these two i have provided and it has just uh, converted everything into images like 48 into 48 size right okay so how to do it now we have understood what's our data set and uh, okay now we have understood what is data set what is generate dot py is doing okay so let's start from here so this is again the same code as i told you from main dot py but what i did is just i just commented all these lines and i have provided my data folder because it, it was inside my data folder as i show you before and train dot csv and validation.csv and test three of them are available over here okay so two of them are available but once you click the generate so it will uh, make and of if you are just turn it if we download this fer 2013 you will find it okay so i have just provided uh, all of them into my data okay so okay so once uh, we are done over here so uh, first of all what we are doing we are just saying epox 100 and learning it is the same as that and the batch size is also again same and first of all we are calling net dot deep emotion so where is deep uh, from the function we have already from deep emotion import deep emotion we already uh, call the function and from generate data dot py we have called generate data okay and then once we call this it will make our fun uh, model okay this is making or creating the model create the model okay by calling the deep emotion calling deep emotion dot py okay sorry for my spelling okay okay so now i'm converting into what i'm doing over here converting if you have gpu then it's better uh, loading 
okay moving it to my a to gpu okay i'm just making uh into gpu actually okay so before that this is the important so this is important code torch dot device if you have cuda already installed it will find so in the device i have a gpu as i have gpu so that is why it is converting into gpu if it is not then it will just move it into cpu or gpu based on your uh features right once we did it we are just printing the net you will shortly see uh, we are just uh, printing all the model like summary of the our model that is the summary of our model and then after that we are reading a train we are validation and we are doing all, all of the steps and then we are transformed or composed we are just calling a function again and train dot data set again plain underscore data set we are calling and the most important thing is uh, again this is the train function the most important thing is train function in the train function we have called over here this is our train function in which we are passing epochs train loader valid other things and then we have everything like no zero dot grade okay for training uh, we have to initialize our gradients and then we are calling that uh, we are passing our data into net which we have already uh, net is over here right we have already called the net and sorry over here net dot train right over here net dot train we are just uh, training for training the model we are, have just passed and data and labels are here and we are loading our all train data okay so if i run this code for example let me run i, I have already run this code and i have achieved good accuracy up to 50 that but i didn't go for all epochs and then just uh stop it so let me shift enter is the command to run it okay once i uh, sh press the shift enter it will start training right so definitely it will take a little it will take time i think within hour or 30 to 40 minutes it will uh, complete all the epochs so the number of, of epochs we have set 100 which are ideal you can just reduce or to improve the accuracy you can increase them as well okay so once uh, i would just want to show you you see first epoch is already performing 35 percent it has uh, achieved the accuracy and definitely at the end it has achieved up to 60 percent right i believe uh, and in the paper they have mentioned uh, let me show you in the paper they have mentioned 70 percent accuracy you see over here in the if i could zoom okay in the paper they have shown 70 percent of accuracy but that's not uh, actually we could not as a you see over here they have shown you that it's not the official implementation like it's not by the author it is by umar sayyid right so they could achieve only 60 percent right so there must be something else uh, which we are missing but anyways you can just achieve up to 60 percent is enough now i am stopping why because after uh, doing it till 100 epochs i have already saved it for you guys you need to run this command like torch.save.net so this is my uh, i have just introduced uh, like over here it's not available so half of the thing you can just you don't do not need to if you follow all the steps mind steps uh most of the function is same you can just visit the github code okay and you can just okay let me stop it okay so i believe that you have run till end and then after that you have saved the code now that i have already saved my um, sorry model i have saved my model in the pytorch uh, to load the model it's always important to first you have to initialize your model first right because in keras if you are user from keras if you have heard about the keras or tensorflow in that case we don't need to initialize our model uh, we, you can just directly load in the keras but in pytorch you have to first load your model and then net dot load and state uh, all the um, uh, states you have to load and then you can so these are the three command and then the third this is to kind of uh, change it to device like uh, so in to gpu if you uh, as i'm running this command and i have already run this command particular command device so this is also really important so i have as i have already run so that is why i don't have issue but in your case you have to do it so let me run this command okay after uh, running this i've already stored uh, the good thing is this is cv2 open cvm 
uh, loading i have already uh, run these command but shift enter i am just pressing again to run it again for example okay over, over here for detecting the face i have just used kahar cascade frontal device and it is already uh, let me show you already stored inside i have just copied this har cascade you see har cascade if i want to zoom oh oh sorry i cannot zoom but har cascade frontal faces let me show you if you go to and uh, har cascade let's cut lock har cascade frontal faces if i just go and if you click you will definitely find har cascade uh, in the data if you come the hard cascades if you okay so over here you can just see um this one hard cascade frontal faces default i have already downloaded it it's already available over here okay so let me go back again okay so that is why i'm just running this command okay and then uh, shift enter again and i'm going to dig into gray level and and then i'm fi finding all the faces okay and then i'm just plotting rectangle over here so you see this is bgr so that is why it's blue so blue in color i have just printed the blue color uh, it would throw an error if i have in disc um, if the face is not detected okay and then i can show you this the cropped face and then as you can see over here the shape is 104 into 3 so as i told you before uh, we are using 48 into 48 so we should change into 48 into 48 I'm just pressing shift enter because I have already done so in your case one another thing is that you have to need the fourth dimension okay uh, for convolution operations you need fourth dimension and now that you have achieved 1 into 1 into 48 then you can you should normalize this is normalization strap okay and then after being normalizing it and then you can okay what's going on over here so actually once i normalize uh it, it is from in the um, from of uh, actually uh, you see np dot expand dems i've used so this is a numpy so i need to convert back from numpy i need to uh, bring it to into uh, flow, uh, flow uh, sorry tensor and then i need to uh, move this to device okay and then after that I can pass to the net and then I can predict over here. You see, so my prediction is, am I missing something? Uh, I think I should run it again because I was telling you something. So let me from here, let me shift enter quickly. Okay, shift enter, shift enter is the command. So actually, I'm for the first time, I'm just using to save the time, I'm just okay now i think it's better so if i run this prediction so this so you see this is five okay so this is five means surprise as we can see over here five is surprise right five is surprise and uh, this is working well let's download um surprised man again so let me download this image let me download this image and check on new image is it working or not oh my god let me copy my path oh i al already uh, saved it but let me replace it again so this is a surprised man uh, man check is the okay it's new one so let me run again okay now as uh, you might have seen the all the same images that is why okay this is jpg again let me run it again to show you that this is working right so okay i'm just shift enter i have just told you uh, already we have uh, discussed what's going on so prediction is five but uh, let's try another image so that we can for example feared image feared man this one i have already stored so let me try this 
and soon we will go for the live demo but before that we should test on different images uh, is it working or not fair man you see this is changed and now this the, the size is 2028 and 2208 shift enter i'm pressing okay now for prediction you see previously it was five and let me do it it's two now two is fair right you see two is fair okay so now it's working perfectly fine so now that we have understood uh, the code uh, for for image so you can low upload you can just download any image from internet and you can just try it but let's go for the live webcam demo so for live webcam demo uh, let's for example right over here let's make some notes live webcam demo and if i just go to cell and cell type markdown i can just do it like this okay so now these are my notes live webcam demo so in this case again uh, we are doing all the same things and we are just uh, uh, for font uh, we are, have just mentioned the font and i will show you what's going on over here uh, like i'm just having a rectangular bar uh, for displaying the the label uh, either happy or other labels and then definitely this is the camera code okay this is the dynamic code so even most of the time your id is one but if you are using multiple cameras you it can be changed and i'm just doing while true for infinite time i'm just reading all the images from camera and then again we just studied fa uh, face cascade and all other steps i'm using the same so what i have done is i have downloaded i have copied the same code from above that we have practiced so far so i, I have just uh, copied all the code and then we can just uh, do it for camera testing okay so again uh, we are converting to 48 and 48 then add the third dimension add the fourth dimension then normalizing it and then as i told you it will be in numpy after normalization as we have used the numpy function for the expand dims so then we are converting into torch tensor and then we are converting into device okay and uh, again like this okay so uh, as i have already loaded my so over here i mm, assume two of the commands you have already run sorry to show you again one is this device this this function this is really important you have i assume that you have already run this code if you're doing it for the first time for example if you have code separate for live webcam demo on these three codes these three lines as well okay so after running these four lines technically then your code would would run good to go but if you are doing it in the one one uh, go then it's good but in case for example if you are deploying somewhere then definitely you have to run four these commands because over here i'm not doing it i'm just using the device and net directly right okay let's uh, just run the code and you see if the prediction is zero i'm just having status okay and i'm just put the text and the rectangles and the, there are two rectangles i will show you soon and for everything disgust two is fair three happy and all of them so let me have show you the code okay you see i hope it would it is working well if i'm happy saying happy for example surprise for some disgust or angry it's kind of disgust and angry is confusing right this is angry okay okay so these are the codes so what's what happening here you see over here i have two black one is one is a black rectangle and another is this one rectangle so that is why for black i show you let me show you the code okay so you see 255 this is black and then we are doing np.0 so this is the black text and that is why uh, over here you see put text on the status i'm putting on two rectangles one is black and okay and another is different 
so you see over here one uh, these are the two statuses one status is this one status is this one is on the black over here and another is near somewhere okay so thank you so much uh, this was the pytorch implementation of face emotion you can train your own network as well and you can deploy it so thank you so much for supporting us smile <laughs>